Southeast Asia. It's not just a place on your vacation wish list. It's a region that's technically one of the most diverse and complex places on the planet. It stretches from the mainland of Asia, including countries like Thailand, Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, and Myanmar, which we'll call Burma for the old school folks. And then for added chaos, it splinters off into the massive island chain that includes Indonesia, the Philippines, Malaysia, and a bunch of others that aren't even on the average tourist radar. And no, Brunei isn't a typo. It's a tiny but wealthy country tucked away on Borneo. Now, if you're thinking this place is just about sandy beaches, think again. Southeast Asia is surrounded by two oceans, the Pacific and the Indian. And let's not forget the endless mountains, jungles, and volcanoes. So yeah, tropical paradise might be pushing it when you're stuck in a jungle trying to avoid getting eaten by something bigger than you. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Our story doesn't start with fancy resorts and beach umbrellas. It starts around 70,000 years ago, when early Homo sapiens, probably lacking any concept of vacation, decided to trek into this rugged and wild region. No flight tickets, no air conditioning, just a bunch of humans armed with nothing but spears and an overwhelming sense of adventure. They probably had no idea that they were about to make Southeast Asia their home. But hey, it worked out, eventually. So why did they decide to head here in the first place? And what did they find? Well, buckle up, because we're about to uncover the truth behind the first humans to take on Southeast Asia, a land that's much more than tropical paradise, but with the perfect amount of wild unpredictability to make you rethink your idea of a vacation. Here's where things get interesting. There's a bit of a debate about how the first Homo sapiens made their way into Southeast Asia. On one hand, we have the out of Africa theory, which is like the world's longest road trip. But the road was basically the world's largest desert and the car was, well, your legs. According to this theory, about 50 to 70,000 years ago, humans left Africa and spread across Asia, starting a game of human migration tag. Fossils found in places like Zhou Kudian in China show that these early humans looked more like today's Africans than the modern Asians we know now. <laughs> Talk about a surprise when you run into someone who doesn't quite match the local look, right? Then there's the multi-regional theory. This one's a bit more like a let's stay in Asia kind of vibe. Some folks argue that Southeast Asians are direct descendants of Homo erectus, who trekked from Africa over 1.8 million years ago. Think of it like your old family member who refuses to leave the house because they're convinced their way of life is superior. The Homo erectus theory suggests that the ancestors of today's Southeast Asians have been chilling in the region for ages. But like every family reunion, no one can agree on the timeline. <clears throat> All right, now let's talk about the evidence. If you were hoping for a nice, clean fossil record, well, the universe decided to make that a bit more challenging. <laughs> the fossil record in Southeast Asia is a bit like your attempts at cooking. There's some evidence, but it's a bit of a mess. However, there are a few gems. One of the earliest and most exciting finds is from the Tianyuan Cave near Beijing. A skeleton dating to around 42,000 years ago shows that modern humans were definitely in the region. This fossil doesn't look like Homo erectus. It looks a lot more like us, with a few extra teeth and hand bones that make us wonder if they were still perfecting their manicure skills. <laughs> and then, and then there's the Fuyan Cave in southern China, which has human teeth dating to between 80,000 and 120,000 years ago. Now imagine this, you find teeth in a cave and think, oh, let's just casually date these to see when the first humans showed up. Turns out these teeth are way more like modern human teeth than anything from Neanderthals or Homo erectus. <laughs> Who knew teeth could cause so much drama? Let's get into the nitty gritty. Modern Southeast Asians have some very distinct physical features. Upward pointing cheekbones, broad faces, flattened noses. But guess what? Early humans in Southeast Asia didn't exactly rock these features. No, they looked pretty different. We're talking skulls that were far from the typical Southeast Asian look. In fact, it wasn't until about 7,000 years ago that you start seeing modern features in the fossil record. Think of it like trying to recognize a new celebrity before they've been given their first makeover. The Liu Jiang skull, for example, was found in Southern China, and it shows that early humans in the region looked more like their African ancestors than the folks we see today. Why the sudden change? Well, 
Genetic studies suggest that there was a population bottleneck, essentially a huge reduction in the population around 10,000 years ago. After that, Southeast Asia saw a rapid expansion of people with those familiar features, probably linked to the spread of agriculture. So yeah, farming was the secret to better cheekbones. Let's head over to Indonesia. You've probably heard about Java Man, right? No, it's not the name of your favorite coffee drink. It's an early human fossil found in Java. But hold on to your hat because the timeline here isn't as clear as you might think. There was a theory that modern Indonesians directly descended from Homo erectus, but attempts to prove this haven't exactly gone smoothly. The fossil record in Indonesia is like a jigsaw puzzle with a few missing pieces. But there are some key specimens like the Wajak skull from Java, which is probably less than 20,000 years old. It's like a mystery movie with no clear villain. Who knows who the real first human in Indonesia is? So how did these early humans actually get to Southeast Asia? By bus? Plane? Boat? <laughs> nope, they probably took the world's most epic road trip. Except instead of a fancy car, they traveled along the coast using boats and rafts. Imagine you're on a vacation, but instead of lounging on the beach, you're surviving off fish, trying not to get eaten by giant predators, and generally just trying to avoid becoming the main course in someone else's dinner. On this coastal journey, early Homo sapiens would have had to contend with some seriously intimidating wildlife. Animals that are long gone, but were absolutely terrifying in their time. For example, they might have crossed paths with the saber-toothed cat, a predator with massive, razor-sharp canine teeth designed to pierce through flesh like butter. <sighs> Not exactly the kind of encounter you'd want while you're navigating the coast in a raft. Then there was the Megaloceros, better known as the Irish elk. Even though it wasn't Irish, and it wasn't an elk. This massive deer stood about 12 feet tall at the shoulder, with antlers that could span up to 12 feet across. <laughs> Imagine dodging this giant while you're just trying to get your bearings and find a place to set up camp. Not the kind of creature you want to cross on your morning walk. And then there's the Glyptodon, a giant armored mammal the size of a small car. This wasn't your average giant sloth, but a massive creature, more like a walking tank, like an armadillo the size of a Volkswagen Beetle. With its thick, bony armor and weight up to 2,000 kilograms, the Glyptodon would have been a terrifying sight. Lumbering across the land, its sheer size making it nearly impossible for early humans to avoid. If they encountered this behemoth, they'd have to hope they weren't in its path. Not to be outdone, the giant short-faced bear was another contender in the list of terrifying prehistoric predators. Standing at 12 feet tall, with the ability to run up to 40 miles per hour, this bear wasn't just big, it was fast and aggressive. Encountering one of these would have been a horrible surprise, especially if you were just trying to make it across the coast, avoiding the saber-toothed cat and hoping your raft wasn't going to sink. Some researchers believe early Homo sapiens took the coastal route, moving along the shores and hopping from one island to another, much like the ultimate human road trip. The coastlines offered some advantages, easy access to food, better travel routes, and fewer giant land predators. Heading north into the icy cold areas of China, on the other hand, meant facing harsh climates and mammoth herds, basically a recipe for disaster. So, instead of heading into the frozen tundra, they chose the coastal route, where at least you could dodge a crocodile or two while finding fish to eat. Choosing the coastal route was the survival move, and frankly, it seems like the better choice. It's like choosing a road trip through sunny California over trekking through the freezing mountains of Alaska. Would you want to face mammoths, freezing temperatures, and the risk of frostbite? Or cruise along the coast and deal with giant sharks, saber-toothed cats, and the occasional glyptodon? Yeah, thought so. As our early ancestors made their way through Southeast Asia, they didn't travel alone. They bumped into some other cousins in the human family tree, namely Neanderthals and Denisovans. Imagine showing up at a family reunion and meeting a distant relative you didn't even know existed. But instead of just awkwardly nodding at each other, early Homo sapiens likely interacted and maybe even interbred with Neanderthals and Denisovans. The result? Some of us still carry their DNA today. So, when you're walking around wondering why you occasionally get a random urge to grumble or grunt, well, you might just have a bit of Neanderthal in Despite not having the internet, Early Homo sapiens in Southeast Asia weren't exactly sitting around. They were busy building shelters, hunting, fishing, and yes, 
creating art and jewelry. Talk about multitasking. They crafted tools, made fire, and <laughs> probably complained about the weather. Evidence from places like Sulawesi shows early humans weren't just survivors, they were artists too. Cave paintings, beads, and burial practices suggest these humans had complex social structures and symbolic thinking, which is pretty impressive considering they didn't even have Spotify to set the mood. Fast forward to today, and the study of early Homo sapiens in Southeast Asia is an ongoing adventure, with new fossils being discovered all the time and advanced genetic research pushing the boundaries, we're learning more about our ancestors every day. Who knows what discoveries lie ahead? Maybe we'll find an ancient selfie stick, or at least some more clear evidence that early humans enjoyed a good beach day. Either way, we're still piecing together the puzzle of our origins, and it's far from over. And so, the story of Homo sapiens in Southeast Asia continues, filled with mystery, adaptation, and, let's face it, a lot of questions. But what's clear is that our ancestors were anything but simple wanderers. They were resilient, adaptable, and more than capable of turning the world into their home, no matter how challenging or strange it seemed at the time. So next time you feel frustrated about modern life, just remember, at least you don't have to cross oceans or dodge mammoths without the comforts of 21st century life. Thanks for joining me on this journey back in time. And remember, even the earliest humans had to hustle to make it work.